Hey guys, good to see you. We'll start here in just a minute and uh, come on, go off, no, no worries. But uh, this will get recorded and uh, posted as well. So we'll, uh, people will be able to watch later and, uh, and be a part of that. So um, I wanted to start uh, tonight just by offering something from God's word. Um, we're in Holy Week now and Holy Week, it's, it's almost like if you've ever been in a, maybe we're in that situation right now where life seems to be moving really fast until it's not. And then it really slows down. And you see a, a, a large part of the Gospels really capture that last week between Palm Sunday and, and Resurrection Sunday. And one of the events that happened in that moment was the cleansing of the temple. And it's one of those scenes that at first glance, we, we like it because everything seems to be so unjust and was unjust against Jesus. And, and um, you know, there we see him in the temple, you know, driving out the money changers, turning over the tables. And then he has this really sweet confrontation with the teachers uh, of the law where he ends up dropping a, a quote bomb from Psalm 8 on them and about children and infants and, and, and praise and, and all those things. And, and uh, we read that passage and we like it. We like it because it feels like Jesus is finally like, he's not going to take it anymore. Um, but we know that that's not going to be true. But what I wanted to just challenge you with is what I was challenged with this morning when I read it. And that is that that story is not about the chief priests. It's about the purity that God requires when we worship him. And it's about how when Jesus says, you know, that, that my father's house, this temple will be a house of prayer. Well, if you think about it, Paul says that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so what does that say about us? What does that say about our purity and, and, and how, you know, we, we engage in those acts, you know, like worship and, and prayer like tonight and, and all of that. And um, we think that it's about other people, but it's not. It's about what is happening in me, in you, and in us. And so I just, you know, as we pray tonight, as I pray out loud, but you're joining me in your prayers, um, I just want to be challenged and share that challenge with you that purity is really important to God, purity in our hearts. And we know from the psalmist that uh, the only way we can have a pure heart is if God creates it in us. We, we can't create purity. It, 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 it's a given to us as God transforms our heart. And so um, we're going to pray tonight. And uh, I did say that if... Um, if, if anyone had a prayer request that they really needed me to uh, lift up to, to send a private message to the account, um, I didn't get any uh, on that. And so if you want to comment uh, any prayer requests, you can. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll necessarily read them out loud because when I get into prayer, I, I get into prayer and I don't want to be distracted uh, from that. But if you all are watching, will you just join in prayer with your brothers and sisters? And, and we're going to pray together. And we're just going to let the Lord lead us tonight. I'm really glad you're with us. Um, I love you guys. And um, God is with us. And uh, he's going to walk with us. So uh, I just invite you to join me as we pray together. Lord, we come before you tonight as your people, scattered but gathered, um, separate but together here individually, but joining together as a family. And I, I, I pray, Lord God, that you would inhabit our prayers, inhabit our praise, that you would uh, lead us, that you would be with us, that you would join us as, as we join in with your spirit. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you would create a clean heart in us, Lord, that you would purify the temple of your Holy Spirit. 
Lord, we, we confess that we have allowed impurity to become a part of who we are and just label it as part of our identity. But Lord, um, you, you require purity and we know that that only comes when you live in us. And so Lord, uh, I pray right now, just, I, I want to confess that I've sinned against you. We've sinned against you. We have uh, turned our eyes elsewhere for hope and strength. And Lord, we need you. And we need, uh, we need you to reign supreme in our hearts. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would forgive us of our sins. And, and I thank you, Lord, that when we pray for forgiveness, you give that to us. That when we confess our sins and, and we come to you, you separate those sins from us. And I am so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful, especially this week, as we remember that the power of forgiveness is found on the cross and what you did for us. So, Lord, I pray pray for purity. I also pray, Lord, that you would increase our heart for worship of you this week. Lord, I ask that, uh, that our opinion of you would grow and our awe of circumstances would decrease. Lord, when, when we are tested, when we are pressed in on every side, um, we know that it's easy to, to get lost looking at those things, looking at those problems, looking at all those um, just things that, that come up in our lives. But Lord, you, you are bigger than all of that. You're better. You're, you're beyond description amazing. And we praise you because you're only worthy of our praise. And I ask, Lord, that um, throughout this week, we wouldn't just think about the different aspects of, of what this week represents to all of us who are Christians, but Lord, that we would think more just about you and, and who you are. Lord, we, uh, we come before you tonight living in a broken world, and we need your help. I think back of yesterday and, and Palm Sunday and that word that was that was shouted out to you Hosanna Hosanna which just means save us or we need you to save us this world needs you we the church need you Lord I want to lift up everybody on the front lines of this virus I think about and always pray for our leaders, for our president and vice president, and for that task force, the, the Dr. Burks and Fauci and, and the people in the military who are working this on a national level. And Lord, I think about Governor Newsom and um, our Assemblyman Lackey and our Senator Wilk and, and the people who are coordinating this on a state level. And Lord, I think about those in the county and public health who are trying to manage this and just the stress they must be under as well as our city leaders. But also, Lord, I think about our first responders, um, police officers and firefighters and paramedics who they don't have time to wait to see the outcome of a, of a virus test before they go in and help somebody. They're, they're in there all the time and, and they're they're putting themselves last, Lord, and, and they're being exposed to this. And we see in New York how many of these first responders are getting sick. And uh, we pray for them. We pray over New York right now, Jesus, and our brothers and sisters uh, in that state, and then especially in New York City, who are um, overwhelmed. Lord, I thank you that some of the numbers over the last couple of days have been better. We pray that that would continue. We pray for healing. We pray for wisdom. We pray for strength. Or we also lift up those who are working in hospitals, doctors, nurses, staff, security people who have to deal with anxious people who are really scared about what's going on. Lord, would you be with them and provide protection? And Lord, I pray that uh, Whatever supplies they're short on, Lord, that you would just supernaturally raise them up. We, our family was just reading the, the story of how you fed 5,000 tonight. And we know, Lord, that if you can feed 
5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish, you can keep a country breathing with just some ventilators and, and provide for that, Lord. So just raise up the resources that we need. And also, Lord, in other parts of the world, we think about Italy and France and the UK and Spain. We think about the UK's prime minister and how he's in intensive care. And we lift uh, Boris Johnson up to you and ask that you would heal him, Lord. That would be really upsetting to that country and I think to the world if something was to happen to him. And so I just lift him up to you. And uh, Lord, ask that, that uh, all the people who are dealing with this firsthand would be um, just healed and, and delivered. Lord, I even just think about uh, Donnie and Danielle, two people that I know who uh, were just tested positive for this today, Lord, that um, you would heal them and be with their family through this time. And many others that I don't know that maybe people here in this uh, prayer meeting know, but Lord, you know them and you're with them and we lift them up to you. Lord, we also just think about our kids and our teachers and how I'm just in awe of how they're adapting and adjusting and leading through this time and still teaching, but I know it's hard, it's stressful. It's, it's new ground for everybody. And uh, Lord, I pray over our students. Lord, I know that um, I was talking to a parent today who, who was telling me that years and years, his kids said, man, I wish I could just do online learning. And after a couple of weeks, they're like, man, I want to go back to school so bad. And Lord, we know that uh, that's not happening. It's going to be a while and probably not until the fall. But Lord, be with our families, be with our students, help them to stay focused and be with our teachers as they uh, try just to uh, just to continue to do their jobs and being so limited. And, and you know, teachers, are, are they, they love their kids and it's hard to love the way that they want to love when they can't be in the same room as them. So uh, lift them up, lift up all of our administrators and, and, and everybody who's uh, working to continue the job of educating our kids. And, um, and Lord, I just lift up our churches to you. I uh, always pray for desert winds. That's where my heart is at. But I think about all the churches and pray that you would provide for all of us and help us, Lord, to be... Um, effective in ministry. And uh, we know, Lord, that there's uh, tech that comes into this and and there's, uh, you know, all kinds of other things that I didn't learn about in seminary and I don't think anybody else learned about in seminary, but Lord, you're providing and the ministry is moving forward. And as we come up on Easter, I just pray that uh, you would empower your church to be the church, that we would worship you as you deserve to be worshiped, that we would serve you and serve each other the way that we're called to serve, that we would be committed to growing in our faith and becoming more like you in every way. Lord, that in all these things, we would be committed to uh, not just you, but to each other, Lord, bring a new sense of just camaraderie and unity between our churches, that we would bring our resources together and, and serve as, uh, as you lead us to serve, Father. This is, uh, this is a challenging moment in our world. But Lord, I think this is the moment that the church was made for. And I just pray that we would keep our, our hearts focused on, on that mission that you've called us to. And like I said Sunday during the message, if, if the message that we're proclaiming now isn't good enough, then it wasn't good enough before. But Lord, it is. Because that message is you. And I just pray, Lord, that you would... Uh, be proclaimed and be honored and and that uh, here as we come up on Resurrection Day, that you would bring a whole new understanding and meaning to what it means that you rose from the dead. That it, this isn't just some story. This is a historic fact. This is something that happened and and it's something that's still happening and that it's the impact of it is just reverberating through culture and through our lives. Lord, just give us strength in that. Father, I also want to just take a moment and pray for people who are anxious. 
today. People who see the world and, and, and are just really struggling with what we see that we sense uh, that things just aren't the way they should be. And we wonder if they're going to return or when they're going to return. But Lord, you, you, you don't coddle anxiety. You confront it in your word. You command us not to fear. And those words, do not fear, are just littered throughout Scripture. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to be people who are reasonable and sensible, but not afraid. And, and now, when I say that, not just about this virus, but about the results of the virus, that we would not be afraid. Lord, there are people probably on this call tonight, on this video tonight, who are suffering financially, Lord. And, and I, my heart is with them. And Lord, I pray for them. And I pray that you would meet those needs. You are the provider. And, and when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Those words have never meant as much to us as they do right now. Lord, meet the needs of your people, but help us not to give in to fear. Lord, we are reminded in this week that you provided for our greatest need. And if you thought of each of our sins and, 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 and died for them and, and give us life over them, if you've done that, then you will for sure take care of our lesser needs. And while it doesn't feel like a lesser need, Lord, truly, the greatest need we had was the need for a Savior, and you fulfilled that. Be with those who need provision. Lord, it also just reminds me to be grateful for what we have. There is nothing we have that you have not given to us. Yes, we work hard. Yes, Lord, we, we are creative. Yes, we, we, um, we do our best at the things that you've gifted us and, and empowered us. But Lord, we are not, uh, we are just not the ones who make it happen. You are, and we are dependent on you. Lord, I want to lift up uh, my brother Don, as uh, he had some things go on last week with his health, and um, is getting his heart checked out, had some tests done, and is going to be getting results back, Lord. Would you just be with Don, and, and be with Sherry through this time, Lord, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them. And Lord, I pray that you would bring back just a, an amazing test result, something that would give Don and Sherry peace and, and know, Lord, that uh, all is good, Lord, especially as uh, they enter this new and exciting season of permanent retirement and um, enjoying new grandkids and family and, and those things. Just be with the Shermans uh, in this time, Father God. Lord, I also just lift up for trees, uh, lift up trees, cousin Angie. Um, boy, she's struggling. She's dealing with the stage three melanoma, but Lord, she's also dealing with a different kind of isolation. Not the kind of isolation that our government's telling us to do, but one that she has uh, just been dealing with for a while, Lord. Be with her, help her, and um, bring godly people into her life, Lord. Bring healing into her body and into her life. Be with her uh, son who's taking care of her and, and, and just the whole family to know how to minister to her through this time, Lord. Just lift, uh, lift her up in this time. Lord, so, um, I just uh, want to thank you and, 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 and pray for all of the people who are in uh, nursing homes. And I know, Lord, um, that uh, someone has shared with me that a, uh, a relative is in a nursing home uh, not far from where there have been uh, outbreaks of the virus. And it's very scary. Just be with her and, and, and protect her and, and keep her uh, healthy and, and help her, Father God, to know that, uh, um, that you're with her. Lord, I also uh, join in with, uh, with Mary and, and praying for missionaries. And, and I especially pray for missionaries because when the economy struggles, when, when means go down, um, they're often the first ones who get financially hurt by that. People will try to keep their churches going, but Lord, sometimes missions giving is, is seen as an extra thing by many. And, 
and the giving falls off and it makes it very hard for them to do um, what what they're doing. So Lord, would you provide for our missionaries? I think about Dave and Stacy Hare in, in Cameroon and just the incredible work that they're doing in scripture translation um, and, and bringing the, the Bible uh, to a new language where it is not in existence. And in the process, they're educating children and families and, and being such a, a, a light in that village, Lord, and with the Quakum people. Would you be with them and provide for their needs, Lord? I think about Vicki and Mission Next, and um, I know it's a, a real crunch financially for her and for that organization. Lord, um, just provide for Vicki and be with Danny and, and uh, keep them right where you need them to be. Keep them healthy. And Lord, just strengthen them as, as this is going on and, 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 and help them be with the hoppers, Lord, as they're discerning and, and, and waiting on you, Lord. We think about all the work that they've done for you and what a blessing it is to partner uh, with them. And uh, all the missionaries, Lord, around the world, uh, whether they're bringing the good news to a culture that's never heard or whether they're doing medical work or whether they're in the middle of the pandemic, whatever it is, Lord, provide for them. And through it all that you would be famous in the work that they do. Lord, I also just join with Mary in praying for the leaders of churches. We've lifted up our churches. Be with the leaders. It's uh, important uh, to uh, uh, just lift up leaders as as. Uh, they're working to transition a lot of stuff that's going on in churches and, and uh, help them in those things and uh, help them never to lose sight on what really matters and, and the work that we're really called to do. Lord, I just want to pray for revival. I pray for revival in our country. I pray, Lord, that as I'm going to preach on Sunday, that people would see that the end of life without Christ is the end of life. But in you is hope. In you is life. In you is resurrection power. In you is grace. In you is comfort. And we need comfort right now. Comfort not in the form of a, a pat on the back from six feet away, but comfort in, in real solutions to real problems that we have. And the only solution to death is resurrection. We can't avoid it. We needed to overcome it, and you did that. So, Lord, I pray for a revival in our country as we uh, just lift up um, uh, your name on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, I thank you for uh, Kim and, and her prayer request for the Good News Club, kids and families. Lord, I know it's so hard for our Good News Club team to have had the, the year cut short. That there were just some amazing things happening and 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 just the sense that you were doing something and 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 then just like that it was it was done. But Lord, I trust that what needed to be done was done. And Lord, I pray that even if it's just in one family, and I think it'll be more, but if it's just in one family, that you would be with and provide for those families. Lord, and if any of those families are struggling or suffering or in need of help, that, that you would put it on their heart to reach out to our church and, um, and find help because we will be there for them, Lord. Be with those kids and those families. And uh, I can't imagine some of the stress that, that some of the, our families are under as they have to manage either loss of job or figuring out child care if if, if they have to go to work, if, if they're essential in an office or whatever, Lord, be with them and help us to be with them too. Lord, I just um, pray for your glory to, to reign and be supreme, that, that you would um, you be glorified by everything we do and, and all that we are, Lord. We would never, never lose sight of the purpose and, and why we're here. And... Uh, God, I, I just ask that you would that you would prevail in our hearts. We know you've prevailed in history. That's that's settled. That's done. There's no suspense about that. But Lord, there are a lot of people's hearts that are hurting right now, and a lot of people 
who are afraid of, of what's happening and, and what the future holds. And, and um, Lord, we need you. We've always needed you. We, we need you now uh, just the same. Lord, give us wisdom, give us discernment, give us strength. And Heavenly Father, I just pray that, um, that we would leave this time just energized, excited, enthusiastic. And this is not seeming like a time to be energized and enthusiastic, but Lord, this is, you've put us in this moment, in this place, in this time, for a reason. Help us to see what that is, Lord. Get us outside of our comfort zone. Get us outside of what we ever have put you in, in terms of a box. And Lord, keep us focused on you. I just think about that moment when you faced Jerusalem and you knew what waited for you there. You knew that what waited for you there, yeah, there was going to be some praise at the beginning of the week, but it was going to end in pain. But Lord, you, Scripture says you set your face like stone to Jerusalem, and you faithfully went. Lord, help us faithfully set our eyes on you that no matter what, no matter what you call us to do, we would follow, we would go because you're leading us. Help us to trust you and just be with all these people who are with us tonight and everybody who's going to watch this later, Lord. Bless them too. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, thank you so much for uh, for joining us tonight. Again, sorry about the audible that we called. Um, we just figured that, uh, I just figured that um, three times bringing people into campus in one week was a bit much and uh, we need to just pace ourselves a little bit so uh, going with this do join us friday night 6 30 for good friday service we'll be doing that uh from the worship center so you can see that online live and uh, that's going to be a powerful time of worship and then of course on uh, resurrection sunday uh at 8 30 a.m or if you're joining us tonight from another church uh, you know, you're, you're welcome to join us, but man, we also want you dialed in with what your church is doing um, and to, uh, to be all in on, on that. And so uh, we're just glad to have you tonight and uh, just wish you all of God's blessings and we'll see you again uh, probably not too far from now. All right. God bless you.